You've gotten me into a lot of trouble. Since exposing our top 10 most valuable secrets in Magic Kingdom, Disney's Animal Kingdom, and Epcot, none of my coworkers will talk to me anymore. But I'm back, and this time I'm here to expose all the most personal secrets about how my coworkers and I, who go to Disney World every single day, survive Disney's Hollywood Studios. I have nothing to lose. This is gonna be fun. I work with some of the smartest people I've ever met in my life, and every day of our lives, we put all our brain power together to analyze every single detail of Walt Disney World. Not only that, but we have at least one person in every single Disney World park every single day, and I'm one of those people. All of this knowledge and know-how has made us very opinionated about the right and wrong ways to do Walt Disney World, and you are about to be the recipient of all of that knowledge. We came up with the top 10 rules for conquering Disney's Hollywood Studios, as decided by my fellow All Ears reporters and I who go to Disney World every single day. Good morning from the rideshare drop-off at Hollywood Studios. We are rope dropping, and that brings us to our very first rule of the day. We rope drop to the left. When you are rope dropping Disney's Hollywood Studios, this is the kind of scene you will encounter. And what you'll notice is over here to the left, these lines over here will start to actually move over to the left as the early theme park entry lanes for resort guests start to close for the day because it's getting closer to the opening of the park for everybody else. The lines for the general public will start to move over to the left, allowing us to get closer and closer to the front as they progressively open. So what you wanna do is get in the leftmost lane when you arrive and be prepared to start moving to the left as they open up those other lines. Now we're at the front of the line all of a sudden, and all we had to do was stay to the left. It's very simple, and it's like magic. And we're some of the first people to enter Disney's Hollywood Studios today just by staying left. It's a great, it's a valuable tip, and it costs zero dollars. Now it's time for the next rule. The rope drop slinky dog dash. Here we go. This is certainly not the first time we've rope dropped slinky dog dash together. And that's because this is what I and my fellow All Ears reporters recommend you do. A lot of people will tell you to rope drop Rise of the Resistance. This is why I don't recommend it. I have on multiple occasions rope dropped Rise of the Resistance only to find that it is down. It has a, either a delayed opening or it opened for a little while and then went down during the early entry resort guest half hour and it isn't open by the time the park opens to the general public. So the posted wait time right now for standby is only down the middle. I'm sorry, thank you for catching me. <laughs> I almost walked into the abyss. Um, 35 minutes. And keep in mind, the park's been open to resort guests for half an hour already. So all things considered, that is really not bad. This is the direct sunlight. I talk about how uh, you'll often, depending on the time of day, even though it's covered, the sun will find you, um, depending on the time of day in the Slinky Dog Dash queue. So that's another reason I like to, if you're gonna wait in line, I like to do this at rope drop because at least in the morning, I mean, I can't imagine it getting any hotter, <laughs> the direct sun, than this later in the day, but it does, and um, but it's still very hot right now. But still, like, we, we need to take any... Ooh, I found some shade in the form of a, a lamppost. I'm just gonna stand here as long as I can. But, um, you know, we'll take any relief we can get, be it lamppost or early morning, rope drop sun, whatever it is, 
Toy Story Land is not for the faint of heart, and it's not because of the thrill rides, it's because of the direct sunlight. <laughs> Posted 35 and we're on in 27. Let's go! Slinky Dog Dash posted 35 minute wait for standby. We just got on in 27 minutes, rope dropping it. This is not the end of the rule, okay? We're testing something else out. Now, my all ears castmate Fry Bucket has a theory that rope drop is more than just the first ride you choose to ride as soon as a park opens. She believes it's a period of time in the morning during which you can ride multiple rides for much shorter wait than you might experience later in the day. So we are gonna test that today in Toy Story Land for Fry Bucket, but we're gonna start at Toy Story Mania because that should be the ride with the longer wait time later, but sometimes it's alien swirling saucers. Ugh, I can't believe we're getting in line again for alien swirling saucers, but this is science and it's serious. And important and we need to make mistakes here today for you so you don't make them with your precious time on vacation here in Walt Disney World. All right, Toy Story Mania, let's do it. It already has a posted standby wait of 60 minutes. That's, that's, that's something else, so. Okay, this is a theory. 48 minutes, we're on the ride, and that is not 60 minutes. So maybe Fry Bucket's a little bit right. 48 minutes. Uh, we almost, it's nearly, it's 50 minutes, which is 10 minutes less than. I'm not listening to Quincy, and I'm putting on my glasses. <laughs> Better than last time, and I wore my glasses. All right, we did it. We rode Toy Story Mania as part of Fry Bucket's era, I don't know, time frame of rope drop theory. Um, it took us 48 minutes. Uh, it was a posted wait time of 60, which is definitely better than what was posted. But to me, rope dropping, is something you do to avoid having to see a posted wait time of 60 minutes. Now we're gonna walk over to Alien Swirling Saucers. Here we are, it's posted as a 50, five zero minute wait, and I just don't have it in me today, friends, to find out, heaven forbid, that it were to be twice that, as <laughs> has been the trend, and it actually turned out to be 110 minutes, I would, be crestfallen. So if you would like to see me ride alien swirling saucers in a recent video, go ahead and check out this video here where I am challenged by my fellow All Ears cast members to do everything in Disney's Hollywood Studios in the fewest steps possible. I'm actually given a very small amount of steps I'm allowed to take and um, I'm sure they think it's hilarious, the outcome. You can watch that video here. Welcome fellow toys, prepare for maximum fun. Rest assured all activities here are age appropriate. Mom, are you doing this? I, I, I agree with that, however, I don't, I still don't want to get in line for Alien Swirling Saucers right now. I don't understand Fry Bucket's love of this ride. I need her to explain that to me, number one. And number two, I challenge her to a rope drop battle. She can pick the park. We show up anywhere she wants to show up. We each pick our own strategy for rope drop. We find out once and for all who knows their rope drop. Our next rule, we don't eat it at the best restaurant. This is Woody's Lunchbox, a very magically themed quick service restaurant located here in Disney's 
Hollywood Studios in Toy Story Land. This is the quick service restaurant that we at All Ears will generally tell new visitors or even returning pros that they have to stop and eat. It has it all, right? Wrong. If you come here every day, we're not trying to sit and eat outdoors. And the only seating offered here at Woody's Lunchbox is outdoor seating. Even though it's covered, it's not air conditioned, and it's so hot right now here in Central Florida this summer, it's, it's extra, extra, extra hot. And it's competitive to mobile order at this restaurant. So because of all of those reasons, even though Woody's Lunchbox is probably, is the best quick service restaurant in Hollywood Studios. This is not where my fellow All Ears reporters and I eat. No, we have some other places. This is Backlot Express, a great quick service restaurant, a classic, a staple here in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Yes, they offer mobile order. Yes, we did use mobile order when we filmed the video about going to Disney World with a group and using Genie Plus. You can watch that video right here and see the awesome food that we ate. The theming here is so classic and true to original Disney MGM Studios where you were truly walking into a back lot and seeing behind the scenes of what went into making movies. And this is kind of the only place you can do that anymore. You are backstage, you are on the back lot and you are among props and uh, artifacts and also different departments that uh, are required to make movies happen. Well, look at this. There's a, a punch clock. Look at this. Punch only your time card. Punching another employee's time card. Like, you could get in trouble here. You can learn how to correctly lift a heavy box. Those look like trampolines. Those are useful. And up here they have things that that should not be around food, that are around food, and that's all comedy. Someone's office is back here. I don't know whose, but it looks really cool. All I know is this is immersive theming and we love that here at All Ears Net, so um, get into it. Backlot Express. This is the dining room. You can eat here, not in there, but next to it. This is ABC Commissary. This is a great quick service option here in Disney's Hollywood Studios. They offer mobile order and there is a lot of indoor seating with great air conditioning. Making this one of the places that my fellow reporters and I choose to go over a place like Woody's Lunchbox the other thing I want to tell you about ABC Commissary is the fact that they serve steak fries here, which is not a fry option anywhere else that I know of or many other places. Um, if you love a thick cut fry that almost gives you baked potato vibes, this is the spot for you, ABC Commissary. So sometimes I'll go there because I feel like having a good hearty fry and you should too. This is Docking Bay 7, a quick service restaurant in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge that offers, um, I don't know, my plant-based food here, the Felucia and Kefta with hummus garden spread, plant-based meatballs, herb hummus, tomato, cucumber relish, and pita. I ate it in the Eat Everything Star Wars Galaxy's Edge video, which you can watch. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I was just trying to eat some good food. Control. No need to worry. I was just trying to eat some good food. You never know what's gonna happen here in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, which is one of the reasons it's one of the cool lands you can experience when you're here in Walt Disney World. But back to food, this is really delicious food. They do accept mobile order, so you can plan ahead if you want to, to ensure that you're able to get the time, the return time that you and your travel party or family need. Or you can come in and order standby. That's an option too. But what's amazing about this place is how deeply, wonderfully air-conditioned it is. 
it is truly, <laughs> it's some of the newest HVAC in Walt Disney World. And um, am I gonna get into like, should I start reviewing the HVAC? The HVAC in, <laughs> in Docking Bay 7 is excellent, but um, definitely keep this in mind. This is a great option, especially if you're a huge Star Wars fan or you're just looking for some like more interesting, um, different options in Hollywood Studios, not your standard theme park fair. You're gonna get some really unique flavors uh, here, some flavor profiles and combos that I find to be very, very delicious. So definitely consider Docking Bay 7 over Woody's Lunchbox when you are here in Disney's Hollywood Studios next. Now this is Pizza Rizzo, which is <laughs> a quick service restaurant over in Muppet Courtyard that people say the pizza's not good or that there is better pizza in Disney World that you could get. But for me, for plant-based eaters, there is a uh, plant-based sausage sub sandwich served with a little side salad with a vegan uh, ranch or blue cheese, I'll double check, salad dressing that's really good. I really love it. And for about $10, uh, it's a great deal, I think. And um, the best part is that because people say the food's not the best, it's not usually that busy and there's a ton of indoor seating and it's very well air conditioned and you can usually find a spot to sit somewhere, hopefully in the wedding room and cool off and enjoy your food without a ton of crowds around you. So that's what we're doing today, folks. Yes, I am going to the place that people tell you not to eat because this is the kind of place that your fellow All Ears reporters and I look for something off the beaten path with at least one menu item that we really love and we know we can depend on. And you can see if you're a fan of the Muppets, I mean, there is like, hello? You have to love this place. Hi, oh my gosh, I wish you could actually buy these merch items. Oh, look at that. It's a, it's a pizza award and there's a cheese award. And we are gonna go up the stairs even though there's great indoor seating with lots of air conditioning here. But we want to check out the wedding room. They have a very special room that is themed as, it's a, a, a wedding room, a room they throw <laughs> wedding parties in, in the back of a pizzeria, which is a thing that happens sometimes. And there's literally a dance floor and there is literally a game that you can play here. And you can see the tables are set up banquet hall style. And we are gonna go all the way to the end here and set ourselves up because this fabric is called Lurex. And it might be strange for me to have a favorite fabric, but I do, and it's this. Lurex. Shout out to my uncle Graham who knew all about the wedding room and was the one who told me about it and when we came to Hollywood Studios one day he said we're going to Pizza Rizzo and we're eating in the part in the wedding room. Yeah that's what I'm talking about. One of the details I love about this is that this wallpaper which has a uh, kind of a flower that sort of dangles from a vine and it's been put on it's been installed upside down <laughs> so you gotta love that muppets humor and you're getting it here in the decor of this restaurant in this quick service restaurant that nobody comes to this is the plant-based sausage sub it has peppers and mushrooms and tomatoes and onions chopped up finely and made into, I don't know, do you call that a ragu? And then um, it has a marinara sauce and this bread is toasty and, and uh, crunchy, a little crunch on the outside, soft on the inside and it soaks up the sauce and it's just really, really, really delicious all together. And then here is that plant-based ranch 
and a nice cup of salad that looks crazy right now because I'm under a blue light, but we are uh, having a disco dance party in the middle of Hollywood Studios, so you have to accept what you see right now. This isn't just lettuce, it's disco lettuce. This plant-based sausage that Disney uses in a lot of locations is an Italian seasoned sausage, but it gets used in a lot of different ways. Another example is right now they're serving it at Casey's Corner as the plant-based Chicago dog, which uses Chicago relish, that neon green relish, and like diced tomatoes and onions, and um, it's not good because it you get the flavor of the Italian sausage with those other flavors that are supposed to go on a regular hot dog, and it just doesn't taste like a Chicago hot dog because it's a it, it's a an Italian sausage. This is the Disney Italian, this is the Disney plant-based sausage at its best, served with Italian flavors. Everything's really fresh and delicious, and I love, I love this sandwich, and I can't believe it hasn't caught on more. You should come try it. Even if you eat meat and dairy, I don't think you'll be disappointed with this, or try the real meat meatball sub that's on the menu, and go, Give it a shot. I'm gonna say some words right now. They're gonna come out of my face. And I want you to listen up and listen good. I love Pizza Rizzo. I'm in a disco dance party, surrounded by Lurex, my favorite fabric, eating delicious food, and nobody's sitting too close to me. I get my own space, and it's prime lunch hour, high noon. I don't even want to think about what's going on at Woody's lunchbox right now. This is this is the, this is the life right here. Our next rule: we don't pay for bottled water. Sunset Ranch Market is kind of like a farmer's market that's made up of all of these individual quick service restaurants, and all of them are really good. Um, of course, the drawback is the fact that the seating is all outdoors, but what's great about it when you're looking for a place to get a free cup of ice water is you can go up to a restaurant that doesn't look as busy right now. Whenever you're here, just take a look at the different windows. And right now I can see that Rosie's is on the busy side. But I can see over here that Catalina Eddie's is not as busy looking. So this is the window I'm going to go up to for us today. Wow. This is a curveball. This is neither the soft ice nor the square ice. This is the tubular hard ice. This is not ice you want to chew unless you are confident in your dental work. This is Ronto Roasters, where you get the iconic Ronto wrap. I get the Zuki wrap and Triple Suns wrap as a plant-based eater. But you can see they have cups available and ready to go here for you to come and serve yourself a cup of ice water. See, it comes out of that plastic thing, and that, in the past, I've theorized, gives it a funny flavor. I'm gonna taste it now with a brand new uh, lease on water tasting <laughs> and um, I'm gonna give it an up to the minute review here at Ronto Roasters. Totally neutral. Anything I thought about the the plastic container giving it some sort of flavor, I totally take that back now. I'm not getting that at all today. Let's check out Backlot Express for free ice water. I'm going up to a mobile order pickup window. I will ask nicely for a cup for ice water and see what the experience is like. Well, the loveliest cast member I ever met, she was so kind and I double checked with her. I said, are you sure um, it's okay if other people come to mobile order pickup and ask for a cup for ice water? And she said, absolutely anywhere. In, on Walt Disney World property, 
um, you can do that. And um, I do know that to be the case, but I also don't want to bother cast members, especially in high uh, volume, very, very busy places. So um, now what I'm doing is walking in circles because I am looking for a, an open soda machine because this is a serve yourself location, which we love. I can't wait to find out what the ice is. I think it is the soft ice. Um, and then we'll taste the water and see what the water tastes like. Kind of a shortage of ice. I press the button and it kind of <laughs> a little bit before the, the ice came out. But when it did come out, it was the soft ice. So <laughs> success. Perfect ice, perfect water. Over here at ABC Commissary, I just asked uh, if I could be let in to ask for a, a cup of ice water. And I was given an ice water by the gentleman at the door. They had them ready uh, to go inside the podium, <laughs> the, the host podium. And um, it's still very cold. There's a lid on it, as you can see. Very delicious ice water, no ice. Um, but it's very refreshing and it doesn't taste like anything weird. So that is a good thing. Part of it makes me feel a little bit guilty because they're using uh, a lid which is wasteful and um, unnecessary other places where we could get ice water. I would recommend walking a few extra steps if you can and avoiding uh, the use of one of these plastic lids and also not having to bother a cast member by asking them for one. I'm glad we tried it out. I'm glad I could show you what it's like if you do need water from, uh, from the ABC commissary, but I personally don't recommend it. It's not one of my top picks. Here in Baseline Tap House, we have my, I think this is my favorite in all of Disney World, my favorite free ice water. They provide you with a cup here and you get it yourself and you come here and you fill up your water cup and you know how I feel about my soft ice so you're not getting any ice here but what I think about being served ice water without ice is that it's actually hydrating you more because there's no solid water, aka ice, filling up the cup. It's nothing but pure liquid hydration, and therefore, that makes it superior in my mind overall. And it literally could not taste better. This is my choice for the number one best tasting ice water in all of Walt Disney World. I'm glad we ended here in Hollywood Studios so I can call it. I've tasted them all. Baseline Tap House for convenience and for flavor and everything overall. It's the best. Next rule, we buy our coffee in a spooky location. If you've watched our video that is just like this, we go to Disney World every single day and this is the only way I will do Magic Kingdom then you know that the other All Ears reporters and I don't go to Starbucks. We go to Joffrey's when we're in Walt Disney World. It often has lines that are much shorter than the Starbucks locations in each Disney World park. This particular location of Joffrey's is no exception at all. Hidden back here at the exit of Tower of Terror. So this is Tower Gifts, which is where you can purchase merchandise related to the ride and other spooky intellectual property Disney owns. You can find this Joffrey's here that not a lot of people know about unless you literally walk from Sunset Boulevard <clears throat> over here specifically to get a coffee drink or a beverage or snack of some kind from this Joffrey's location or you are exiting the ride, you're not going to know this Joffrey's even exists. And as you can see right now, there is zero line to buy a beverage. So we're going to get in line and I'm going to show you something else cool and spooky about this Joffrey's location. This is Frozen in Fear. This is a 
bone chilling combination of frozen lemon, Minute Maid Premium Lemonade, and wild grape. And it turns it this really spooky, almost black color. And it is a drink that's exclusive to this Joffrey's location in all the world. This is the only place you can get it. And I love that it is spooky themed, frozen in fear to go along with the theming of Tower of Terror next door. You can see here, you can add Grey Goose vodka to make it spirited, which makes it, uh, bumps the price up to $14.99. We're gonna get it without the alcohol and it is $6.49 for us. And we are going to try this beverage out. I've never had it and I am excited to taste it. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not afraid of this magical beverage. This tastes really delicious. A lot of times when you put lemon or lime with something, but especially lime, but sometimes lemon, it overpowers the flavors of everything else. This is such a perfect balance between grape and lemon. I really taste the grape. Maybe it's because there's so much in it to create this dark, beautiful, rich color. But this is really balanced. And again, the only place you can get this is at this Joffrey's location next to Tower of Terror. Our next rule, we find hidden air conditioning. Hollywood Studios is a shockingly outdoor and very hot park considering it's themed after the movies. So you're talking about a few and far between locations where you can get ice cold air conditioning and I'm gonna show you all two of them other than restaurants and some queues. It's hot here. This is Star Wars Launch Bay. This is an exhibit featuring some models and costumes from the Star Wars franchise. And it is also the home of a meet and greet with Darth Vader, Chewbacca, and BB-8. All of these things are wonderful, especially if you are a major Star Wars fan. But even if you're not, we recommend that you stop in here and I'm about to show you why. I can already feel the reason from here and we are literally outdoors. There is so much air conditioning being pumped into this building right now that it is coming out through the doors and making the literal outdoors cool as well. This is serious HVAC. The HVAC <laughs> at Star Wars Launch Bay is on point. I mean, just a wall of chill. This is the best air conditioning I've ever felt in my life. Pre-Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, this was a photo opportunity that you could have here with blue milk. And uh, it's still a great place to come hang out. I always like to point out there's a secret outlet under here should you need to charge your phone. Um, you can do that. I have definitely sat on the floor here when I didn't bring my charger with me and charged my phone there. There are the meet and greet sections right here. We've got 30 minutes right now posted wait to meet Chewie. You've got 35 for Darth. And let's see what BB-8 is up to over here. 20 minutes for BB-8, aww. 20 minutes for BB-8. Go see BB-8. <laughs> this is Walt Disney Presents and Walt Disney One Man's Dream. This is an exhibit uh, featuring artifacts from Walt Disney's life and career. And it culminates in an experience that most people skip. Now, the number one most important reason that you want to come to Walt Disney Presents is the fact that it celebrates the life and the legacy of Walt Disney, the man who created literally everything that we see around us. If it weren't for him and his dream, then we wouldn't have any of Walt Disney World, even though he didn't even live to see it. 
But the other reason to come into this space is because it has very good air conditioning and anyone can walk in anytime and there are some benches and then there's that thing at the end that we'll talk about because we're gonna do it. And also you can meet Ariel from the live action Little Mermaid movie right now and that's yet another great reason to come to One Man's Dream. Here's the actual multi-plane camera. Walt loved trains. Walt's second grade school desk with his initials, WD. We don't condone vandalism. But if you are the next Walt Disney and you would like to etch your name, your initials into something, just please make sure you truly are the next Walt Disney though before you do it, okay? Thank you. Tell your parents that Breedlove said it was okay. Just kidding, don't. Or maybe do, I don't know. I mean, if they're the next Walt Disney. Does she look familiar? That's Mary Blair. Yes, icon. And back here is the secret surprise, okay? This is the One Man's Dream part of the Walt Disney Presents One Man's Dream title. And this is a, an exclusive documentary that is narrated by Julie Andrews. It's um, not very long, but it is very good. And it offers you an opportunity to sit down in some air conditioning. So after you've looked at all of the really cool artifacts from Walt Disney's life and career, this is what you want to do next. Sit down and chill out. And I have to say, the further I've gone back in the building, the better the HVAC has gotten. Long dreams, and one of its greatest dreamers was Walt Disney. Walt believed that any height could be scaled if you knew the secret of making dreams come true. I needed to sit down immediately after sitting down. <laughs> Listen, One Man's Dream is a great movie. It's 16 minutes long. It's a little longer than I thought. Um, I mean, it is a short, but um, 16 minutes might be longer than you want to spend watching a documentary in the middle of your day in Disney's Hollywood Studios. So keep in mind that is how long it takes, but it is a great opportunity to pay tribute to the man who started it all, Walt Disney, and also to sit down in air conditioning to the point where I can't get back up. <laughs> I had to sit back down immediately. Um, not in air conditioning, but uh, overall the experience was great. Um, the better air conditioning is still in Star Wars Launch Bay, but you don't get to sit and watch a documentary in there. Uh, so I would say they're they're pretty even for experience and they're right next door to each other Which is good in the sense that you can AC hop but bad in the sense that we could really use something over there by Toy Story Land in terms of air conditioning uh, if you're not eating at Docking Bay 7 or going into Oga's Cantina You're not getting into any air conditioning or the queue for Toy Story Mania, but um, Yeah come and take advantage of it at these two locations. Next time you're in Hollywood Studios, especially if you're here during this summer or any summer in Orlando. Our next rule, we always stop at the gelato cart. We do, I do. This is the Grand Avenue gelato cart. It is a semi-recent addition to Muppets Courtyard, also known as Grand Avenue and it is a welcome addition, let me tell you. Serving Vivoli Gelato, which can be found other places on property like Disney Springs. This cart offers a uh, selection of really delicious flavors, some of them uh, rotating, a, a rotating flavor of the month offering, which was recently POG, Pineapple Orange Guava, and it was so popular, the demand was so overwhelming that it is now a permanent flavor, but it is an exclusive flavor to this location in Disney's Hollywood Studios. So we are definitely getting the POG. It is a, uh, is it a sorbet? Yes. And, and that makes it plant-based. There's no dairy in it. 
and um, that's awesome. So I can actually eat the pog, and then they have a flavor of the month as well. What's the flavor of the month right now? The flavor of the milk. Oh, watermelon, amazing. Okay, and that one's a sorbet also, right? Incredible, okay, so two scoops for $9.25. Let's get a scoop of each and give it a try together. So this is the pog on top and that is the watermelon underneath. I am, I've tried both of these and they are both really, 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 really delicious flavors. That's why I'm excited I got them today. And I get to eat them again and have a whole new perspective with you. Literally could not love that anymore. Pineapple orange guava is kind of an iconic juice blend that you'll find in Hawaii, but also different places on property and sometimes it will be called different things. So um, when a juice at a resort has a fun themed name like jungle juice, if you ask what it is, nine times out of 10, they will tell you it's Pog. Pineapple orange guava. The watermelon's incredible too. It's, it honestly tastes like you just put a watermelon without the rind and you just put it all in a blender with sugar and then froze it or like put it in an ice cream maker machine. Our next Hollywood Studios rule, we drink secret soda. Here at Baseline Tap House, which is right next door, it's connected to Sci-Fi Dine-In Theater and on the other side is Muppets Courtyard and this is Grand Avenue. So you can come right in here. This is a place known for the beers that it has on tap. It has a rotating offering of craft beers on tap and also a small plate menu. But those aren't the reasons we're here today. We are here because of something else they have on tap. A very, it's rare in the US. I've certainly never seen it on tap anywhere here before. Barilitos, strawberry hibiscus soda on tap. Not only is it rare, not only am I told by my fellow All Ears reporter who gets it every single time she is here in Hollywood Studios, but it also offers free refills for the entire day of your visit for $4.59. I've never tried it before. Today is going to be my first time. We are trying it together and I can't wait. Whoa. The only thing I can ask you to do is take my word for it. And if you don't take my word for it, take the word of my fellow All Ears reporter who tried to tell us. And I finally listened because I needed content for this video. <laughs> and she's right, you're right. And I'm sorry, I will never doubt you again. This is a must. When you are in Hollywood Studios, you've got to stop by Baseline Tap House and try the Barilitos Strawberry Hibiscus Soda. It will rule your world, your Disney world. I'm gonna take the soft ice from the soda and make like a, <clears throat> a lightly flavored water with soft ice here at Baseline Tap House. I, there's, this is like a video of hacks. All we're doing, I should just do, should we do a hack series next? Okay, I did something wild. I created a concoction while you weren't looking. I went and got more of the strawberry hibiscus soda on tap free refill from Baseline Tap House. This time I asked them not to fill it up all the way and to not put any ice in it because I wanted to bring it back over and add a scoop of Pog to it to make a float. And that's what I did and it became even more frothy and exciting than I ever dreamed. And now we're gonna taste it. Let's see what happens. It's really good. The strawberry hibiscus soda tastes like juice, so it has a real fruit flavor to it. It's not um, 
like root beer or, you know, a soda that you traditionally think of making a float with, it's, it, it tastes more like juice. And then you add the pog sorbet, which is also made with real ju juice and tastes like real juice. Between the cost of the soda and the cost of the one scoop of gelato, you're talking about $12.09. But then you get free refills on the soda, which makes it um, a little better. And I do think it tastes really good. And you're not gonna find another float like this anywhere else in Walt Disney World. In fact, you can't find it on any menu. You have to make it up for yourself. So I say give it a shot. It's really, really, really good. Our next rule, we don't use the flashiest restroom. Flashy? <laughs> <laughs> for a restroom? These are the Toy Story Land restrooms. And as you can see, they appear to be made out of toys and toy boxes like everything else in the land. The theming of the land is immaculate. And this restroom is no exception. But as you can see, it has large crowds of people outside. People are waiting for loved ones inside. Toy Story Land is a hustling and bustling land, and this is the only restroom in it. Because of that fact, it is very, very busy, and because of the high volume, it's hard to keep it really, really clean. So this is a restroom that, although like the tangled bathrooms in Magic Kingdom and the bathrooms in Norway Pavilion in Epcot might be the ones that we tell you you have to check out because they look so cool. These are the restrooms that we actually use as All Ears reporters. No, we avoid these completely. I never use these restrooms. These are the Black Spire Outpost restrooms, which are located here in the Black Spire Outpost in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in Hollywood Studios. And these are very elaborately themed. Um, the thing with Star Wars theming, a lot of the time, they make it look dirty on purpose, okay? And some people don't like it. And shout out to my uncle Graham. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Who says, I don't like Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Everything looks dirty, okay? So I understand he's not a Star Wars person. And when he comes here and looks around, things do look dirty on purpose. And the bathroom is no exception. It's cleaner. Uh, than the rest of, of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, but it's still distressed. It's really new, really super clean. They keep it immaculately clean. And it's honestly, for how busy it is in Black Spire Outpost, not the busiest restroom in, in Hollywood Studios by far. In fact, I would venture to say it's usually kind of slow. Over here at ABC Commissary, there is a very secret hidden bathroom that you can access from the side of the building, not having to go through the front entrance. And I'll show it to you right over here. This little metal thing sticking out is actually a handle that grants you access to the very side of the dining room of ABC Commissary and you can see here's the restroom sign and there is a hallway here with some restrooms and they're very quiet, they're very clean. Look at this nice place to sit and rest here as well. Truly a restroom. Over here when you're facing Rock and Roller Coaster to the left next to the KRNR, the rock station eaten to the beat snack booth you will find restrooms and listen these are hit or miss sometimes they are very very crowded sometimes they're empty just depends on the time of day and how many people are over in this courtyard about to ride rock and roller coaster right now there's a posted 60 minute standby wait which means it's pretty busy but not the busiest and you can see in general, there aren't a ton of people in this area loitering right now. Know these bathrooms exist because a lot of people on our team have brought up the, these, these restrooms as being kind of secret 
hidden bathrooms that not that many people know about, but I know a way more secret hidden bathroom in this area, not many feet away, that is absolutely, I'm, I'm going to, I'm gonna say it, this is the most hidden bathroom in any park in Walt Disney World. First of all, you have to come back to this back courtyard as if you are going to attend Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy, which we have done many times before together. But that's not what we're doing today, friends. We are taking a right instead of going into the entrance to the theater. And we are going straight to these hidden secret bathrooms. Okay, first of all, I wanna point out the fact that unless you know these are here, you're not coming back here to use the restrooms. The theater exit has these doors right here that exit right out to the courtyard. There is an option to exit directly through this hallway that connects to the bathrooms, but most people don't use it because these are so convenient and straight ahead and just like, they just wanna walk out into the world and not into a hallway. But if you come over here and press, <laughs> press this button, Yes, press it, it takes a second. These doors open and you are in this hallway completely by yourself with these two restrooms here. And you will see these doors eventually will close behind us. And we're here in the most secret bathrooms in all of Walt Disney World parks. Unanimously, my fellow reporters and I agree that the restrooms located just out of, just outside of Pixar Place and just before you enter Toy Story Land are the worst bathrooms in Hollywood Studios. These are the bathrooms that every single person on our team will tell you not to go into. They are small, there are more stalls than there are sinks, which uh, one of our reporters finds to be very disturbing. <laughs> and they're also dimly lit. It's weirdly dark in there and it doesn't feel clean. So for all of those reasons, we tell you, please, please avoid these restrooms and choose something else. Walk a little further, it's a, kind of a lot further over to literally any of the other bathrooms that we've talked about today. Even the Toy Story Land bathroom would be better than this. Please don't use these bathrooms. And scene. What video would be complete without me having to put on my poncho? Right? Just in time for our very last rule. And this is an emotional rule because this is the, the final video in this series in terms of parks. So, it's sad to say goodbye to you for a while, but maybe we'll come back and do another version of this series uh, because I love doing it and I hope that you loved watching it. But that brings us to our 10th and final rule for today. And of this particular series, we always say hello to Mortimer. This is a very special detail. Technically not a hidden Mickey, but it does get, you know, considered in the official list as a as a hidden Mickey. And it's right here on the corner of Hollywood Boulevard and Sunset Boulevard imprinted here in the cement on the sidewalk. It says Mortimer and Company 1928 and that is the year that Mortimer slash Mickey was created by Walt drawn by him originally while he was riding a train home having just found out he lost the rights to his very first successful character Oswald the Rabbit. You know that he has subsequently, the Disney company has regained rights of Oswald and there's actually a lot of merchandise available with Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. But 
at the time, it was just the most crushing thing for Walt. And um, to make himself feel better, he got out his paper and a pencil and he drew a cute little mouse he originally named Mortimer that Lily and his wife convinced him later to call Mickey and the rest was history and as Walt always said let us never lose sight of one thing it all started with a mouse and what did you think of this video where there are things that my fellow All Ears reporters and I do to ensure a seamless day in Disney's Hollywood Studios that you want to try on your next vacation. If you liked this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch me try to conquer everything in Hollywood Studios using as few steps possible. In fact, I'm hardly allowed to use any steps at all. And now it has fully started raining again and my poncho is back in my cinch sack. <laughs> Have a great one. We'll see you next time. Bye. Well, at least it was nice for the most of the day. <laughs> Get me to my Uber. <laughs>